welcome back to another week of Art Life. Um, this week I'm taking a break from building the studio just to show you a little bit of what I've been working on. I finished this painting this week, which I'm really happy with. Um, and I actually want to start a, a painting on paper today. So I thought I might just share that with you, giving you some insight into my practice while we're doing the massive build of the new studio. So yeah, something a bit different this week. It's going to be good. I'm Jessie. I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. style you know the big landscape work we normally do it was just a way to um, clear my head while we're moving studios and do something just for the fun of it um, so it was beautiful and I'm really happy with it uh, today however I want to get back to uh, more of my rhythm of what I normally do um, I've been having a lot of requests about commissions for some of my skyscapes and I've decided I'd like to do one on paper uh, so oil on Fabriano paper it's going to be quite a rapid painting um, however because I'm working on paper and not on canvas it's quite interesting because the process is a lot more rapid canvas can take a lot of work I can work on some canvases for weeks months even years and um, you have a time frame uh, before the paper starts to wear and tear uh, so it means that the marks you make you have to be super confident you can't overthink things you have to work rapidly and as well at the end of it you can frame it um, with a big juicy frame and it looks as amazing with as much gravitas as if it was a painting so working on paper is always a fun day so we're gonna start make a start now and I'll see how far I get with it I am going to be very sad to see the studio go and if anyone has watched the video on the studio tour we did for the studio let me refresh your memory because we have the secret drawer of paper um, where I keep all my drawings so I'm going to see if I can find I'm actually thinking arche paper something a bit thicker it's more like card but it has like a softness to it um, would be quite good for the for the paperwork today um, I am going to miss this drawer I'm hoping that Rafe Rafe might make me one. Rafe, if you're watching this, can you can you make me another drawer in the new studio? Ta -da! I really like working on an easel for paperwork. Um, if I had space for an architect's table, I probably would also try working on the, an actual kind of drawing table. But I've got this like bit of plywood which I sanded down and it's actually perfect as a support for um, paperwork. So it just allows me to kind of treat it as if it was a canvas. It up a bit. Perfect. These little clips are amazing. You can, without like putting staple marks into uh, the paper just to keep it in place, you can literally just grip, grip your paper to the top and it sort of holds it in place, which is quite good. Um, this actually just got me thinking about cheeky little tools I have around the studio, which just make my life that much easier. Um, I think all artists get really attached to certain tools in their practice. Um, I just wanted to share a few of the things I find really helpful um, with mine. 
Top of the list is actually a new purchase. What is this, you might ask? So this literally is a stand for wet paintbrushes. So you can just lean them while you're still using them. So they don't get all mixed up. They don't roll around the floor, which is usually what happens with me. So you can actually, as you're painting, you can just like leave and rest your paintbrushes. Uh, so they don't kind of like get dirty or you don't confuse them when you're working with like, yeah, different tones, different colors. I always would mix like a blue paintbrush with red and then it would, I just, everything would go purple. So really handy little tool there. Um, another tool, which I actually find really helpful, uh, is my mole, ooh, is my mole stick. Um, we actually make this in an episode, um, how to make your own mole stick. Check that out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I'll use this a lot with my drawing today where I'll be resting the mole stick on uh, the board so I don't get like my hands smearing in the paint. Um, another tool, which is amazing, a glass muller. So if, like me, you like mixing your own pigments, um, I've just got a bit of sand blasted glass. And this is how you grind your pigments in a kind of clockwise fashion. Um, and you can actually, if your paint is maybe a little bit too, um, you're working on a big mass of painting and just using a little spatula isn't cutting it, you know, big load of linseed oil, working it in uh, to the palette. This is a great way to make large amounts of paints um, with kind of different mediums in a large quantity. Uh, so love that tool. What else could I show you? It's quite nice just showing you things. Um... So I'm gonna use uh, four main colors for a drawing like this. I generally, with these sorts of paintings, choose two or three key colors which I wanna work with to create the landscape. So this time I'm gonna go for genuine Naples yellow, cobalt blue, uh, manganese violet, and Naples yellow. But I'm actually gonna mix these two to make a kind of really warm, earthy, um, soft yellow. So it'll be a kind of very sort of, yeah, yellow, yellow and blue are the main colors, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it some really nice variation. Um, just put the paint on the palette. I'm being very naughty and working on the sandblasted glass at the moment rather than my wooden palettes. These are amazing. So, um, with the manganese violet and the Naples yellow, it makes such a nice colour, so I'll just mix that and show you what I mean by that. It just makes the loveliest, warm, rich, earthy colour. So that'll be brilliant. So I'm also going to lighten up the cobalt blue into more of a sky colour. Just a bit of warm white and cobalt blue. It's your classic juicy summer sky. So I think it's so good to get two colours which you just love working with. So this really warm tone and then this beautiful bright blue will just make a really good base for the painting. Um, I want a, maybe a bit of Naples yellow here. Maybe just to make like a really warm peachy yellow as well. Yeah, three colours, I can work with that. So let's get started. I'm going to use walnut oil just because it's my favourite. Um, you really don't need much paint when you're working on paper um, because the paper's not going to be able to take much oil paint. So I have to be really confident with my marks and kind of know what, I'm in, what I want to do. Um, this is going to be quite an abstract, playful study because I haven't done any painting on paper for a while. So I'm just going to play. I think... Usually I would sketch out like a big landscape, um, but because I want to play, I think I'm just going to make sure that I know that maybe here, I want to concentrate paint in this kind of point of the canvas. So I think I'll start with blue. This is always the best. 
but <laughs> come closer. <laughs> And it doesn't blend like it would on canvas. So already that will start to feel really dry. Yeah. And then always using a different brush for a different kind of tone. Um, I think the earthier, the earthier the colors down here. So it's just really about slapping on the paint quickly before it, it gets absorbed by the paper. And you wouldn't think this would be quite good for sky, but believe me, it'll look great. Um, Again, it's just about sketching where I want the landscape to sort of be. And this is just abstract skyscape, so it's just being the play the more playful the better. experiments when it comes to painting uh, on paper. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, leave any comments below if you have any questions about some of the things I've gone through today. Um, yeah, and I hope you found it interesting. It's always good to see a window into a more kind of uh, sketchy part of an artist's practice, not just always with the serious paintings. Um, yeah, okay, well, tune in next week. We release videos every week, so don't forget to also follow me on Instagram at JessOliverArt and my website, JessOliver.co.uk, if you want to see uh, more of my paintings. Until then, I will catch you next week. I'm just going to finish this, and then uh, I'll post a picture about it on my Instagram, so definitely subscribe if you want to see what it looks like. Bye!